Hey, welcome, welcome. Austin here, and I'm joined by Adam Infroy. Um, even though his tag says Austin Distal as well. <laughs> I'm Austin as well. Yeah, there's two of us. Never today. have enough. Um, but yeah, I'm joined by Adam Infroy. Uh, you all may know him through his blog, which this past year made $1.5 million. And we're going to talk about today exactly how you can turn your blog into a money making machine. Um, now, we're going to do a lot of this uh, up front, just going right through the content. But if you have burning questions, I want you to look down below and you'll see a link to join the conversation. And we'll do a whole Q&A session at the end, uh, throw in your comments there um, so we can get right into the comment uh, into the content. Um, but along the way, I do see we already have some comments coming in. We are actually live, <laughs> um, but of course, the recording will be published and sent to you at the end. Um, and yeah, Adam, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, man. Happy to be here. Sweet. Yes, uh, what kind of content are we going to roll through today? So today is all about blogging like a business. So how to turn your content into profits. We all want to get traffic online through SEO and content marketing and all these different things. But how do we actually take that and make a lot of money doing it? So it's kind of about the story of that from a content link building and then you know, content monetization standpoint. What's the latest and greatest in 2022? What actually works this year? Awesome. Um, sweet. Well, a little housekeeping here. Uh, you all joining us live. Uh, and if you RSVP, you are also watching this. Um, you all get a gift, right? <laughs> By showing up here, you get access to one of Adam and Freud's best trainings. It's actually from his course. Uh, and it's a deep dive on link building. So if you go to jasper.ai slash link dash building dash secrets, uh, you see, see that on the screen, you'll be able to watch that right now. No opt-in required. It's yours to keep. Um, Adam, you want to talk about the training a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, when I built my blog, I'll go into the initial story of it, but link building was a huge part of it. And building authority online is more important than ever. We can use tools like Jasper and we can use SEO tools to write content. But then, you know, since more and more people can do that, authority really matters. So you see big media sites entering the picture, ranking for things like Rolling Stone might write an article now about protein powder. So how do you compete with that? Well, you need some authority. You need to do link building. So this is a step-by-step -step, about an hour and 40 minute video of the exact process that I use to grow my domain rating from zero to 70 in about a year. So it's really in depth. Don't watch it right now. Like just save that link and then watch it later. But it's part of our one video in our main link building module. Sweet. Um, so this training is for you. Stick around all the way through it. Uh, if you are a customer already of Jasper and you're trying to figure out how do I use Jasper to write long form content and so uh, for your blog and then uh, the actual tactics on how to turn that content into a business uh, and there's several different ways uh, that we'll cover that in today's training uh, and relating it to some of the businesses that you might uh, already know. Uh, this is also for you if you're a marketer or an entrepreneur that is looking to build a passive income and be able to work remotely from anywhere in the world. Uh, and it's all through content marketing. And so uh, never before has it been easier to do content marketing than now with Jasper. Um, and at the end, we'll be sharing uh, introduction to cohort number two to the Jasper Mastermind, which is beyond the tool, uh, a full coaching and training program that we've teamed up here with Adam so that you have community, accountability, and structure to building a content marketing business. So uh, if you're interested in joining cohort number two of the Jasper Mastermind, then stick around to the end. But we're going to deep dive here into the content here for the next about 30 to 45 minutes. So um, if there's any uh, content here that we need to talk about before we get started, Adam? No, I think we're ready. In? Let's dive right into it. So I'm going to share go my in. screen and we're going to go right into the presentation. Uh, if everyone can see that all right. That's what everyone always asks right in Zoom these days. Can you see that all right? Yes, we can all see it. Technology works. All right. So this presentation uh, we're going to cover, it's about 30 minutes and it's about how to turn your blog to turn your content into a money-making machine. So first of all, I just want to quickly do the, you know, the slide presentation of who am I. So, you know, I was a person that I learned digital marketing over the course of about eight years. I didn't do great in college. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I learned about passive income probably back in 2008. I listened to like Pat Flynn and heard some podcasts. I read the four-hour work week. I really liked the idea of it. 
but I didn't really know what I was doing. I tried and failed at a lot of online businesses. Over the years, I finally got my stuff together without swearing and got a, you know, started to get a real job in digital marketing. And it led me to a career that over the course of about five or six years led me to Austin, Texas, where I became an affiliate manager for a company called Big Commerce. And then I was the digital marketing director. But I saw my future. I saw that no matter how high I got up in this digital marketing career, I would always be answering to somebody in a suit that didn't really understand the numbers and it was revenue based. And I would have to be stressed out to the max in these meetings every single week, no matter if I was a VP, director, CMO, it didn't matter. And I was working and stressed out to the max. I mean, I saw my future was a prison. I saw that I was working 50 hours a week and I was living in downtown Austin, but I wasn't really saving money. You know, I, I was making about $120,000 a year, which after taxes, I was probably bringing home seven or $8,000 a month. Most of it was going to rent and to bills and to having fun on the weekends and my car payment and all of that. And I wasn't really saving money. I was kick, kind of kicking the can down and stressed out to the max. But, you know, fate kind of struck. I was, I was in the right place at the right time. So I was an affiliate manager seeing all of these affiliates make six figures a month, some of them doing this blogging and affiliate marketing thing. And then I worked closely with the SEO team. So I saw what a high growth startup was doing from a content perspective. So I had the two best of both worlds in my job. And I took these things and I took these startup principles and I applied them to my own personal brand at adamenfroy.com in January of 2019. And the rest they say is history. I was able to surpass my full-time income in seven months with these strategies. And after that, I traveled the world. I went from working 50 hours a week plus all this time on my blog to spending about 10 hours a week on my blog for a while. Um, currently, I live in Florida with my wife and two dogs. I live a pretty simple life, you know, nothing too fancy or flashy. I still work on my website. Um, I make over, however, today I make over $200,000 a month for my blog. That's through pretty much mainly affiliate revenue, um, sponsored placements, well, things that we'll cover actually in this training. Uh, currently I write to 550,000 monthly readers and I teach over a thousand students how to do this. So a lot of people that teach content and teach blogging started back in 2010 and they teach the same outdated stuff tonight, uh, today. So like, you know, a lot of the people that you've heard about in the marketing space, whether it's Pat Flynn or Backlinko or Neil Patel or these guys that got their start 10 years ago, can't teach this today because they haven't had to start it today. You know, the rules, the same rules don't apply anymore. So we have to upgrade our strategies. And to do that, like I'm teaching every step of the way as I go. So I want to teach from, you know, zero to my first 5,000. I taught that. And then zero to my first million we got there. Now, as I grow from 1 million to 10, which is what our plan is over the next couple of years. I'm going to teach every step of the way of that too, how to turn and create a real media business through your content. So there's a little bit of quick background on me, uh, just showing you some proof over it. If you haven't seen it before, this is my Ahrefs profile showing the growth of my you know organic traffic over since January 2019, directly correlated basically with my backlinks and I rank ranking for 400,000 keywords on Google. This is my profit and loss statement in QuickBooks from 2020, just 2021, just to show you the blog made $1.5 million. Here's the different revenue streams for it. Courses, affiliate, consulting, ad revenue, cost per click revenue, 1.5. After expenses, we made 1.1 million profit. So that's about 70, 75% profit margin on that business in 2021. So we want to talk about this and we're going to talk about what blogging is today and how to frame it in your mind because things have changed tremendously. So long gone are the old school days of blogging. Long gone are the days of I'm going to create a blog. I'm going to update my audience. I'm going to write about my life and my lifestyle and people are going to read this thing, you know, and that doesn't exist anymore. Writing every single word doesn't exist anymore either. And ranking for low competition keywords with thin content, 500 word articles, going after the long tail is not a way to build a sustainable business. What works today is blogging as an evergreen Google driven engine. You're not just getting new audience and then they're reading your stuff because they like you. You're getting a brand new audience every single month in an evergreen way from Google traffic by ranking and getting this traffic consistently over months and months organically. That is a real business. Blogging is being a mediator of purchase decisions. So people search for things online, best laptop, best credit card, best project management software, best camping poles, tamp camping tents, doesn't matter what it is. Blogs provide that mediator through affiliate links to, for people to make those purchase decisions, which sometimes they're not even aware of being involved in that process. Blogging is being a real influencer. And what I mean by real, it's not creating some sexy pic on Instagram and then trying to sell a t-shirt to somebody and you can barely do it. You're actually making, you know, 
real influence. And by influence, I mean you're influencing people's purchases online. My blog influences purchases of over a million dollars of business software every single month. So that's a real influence that can actually help build your authority and make you a real brand online. And blogging today is updating your strategies for the 2020s because that's the decade we're in. The old rules don't apply anymore. So when I talk about blogs being mediators, what I mean is that somebody searches for something on Google, they type things into their brain, and we own this digital real estate. We own this spot. There's top 10 results, right? You have to get on page one. We own one of these spots. And a lot of these physical or digital real estate spots here is actually more valuable than some physical real estate, unbelievably. People think of something, they type into your head, your blog, they get to your article on the best type of product that you're reviewing, they click your affiliate link, they, they make a sale, you make a commission. That's what I mean by mediator. And being a middleman is a great position to be in. But how do we make money blogging in the 2020s? What has changed? Well, we need to capture and monetize attention. We live in the attention economy. People vying for your attention on everything from TikTok to YouTube to Instagram to Facebook to Google, all of this. And anyone can capture attention if they have the right strategy. But we have to monetize this attention. Now, to make money online, we can't capture attention for 10 minutes or 10 you know, days. We have to capture attention in an ongoing evergreen way on Google and on YouTube. Those are the two main places that you can actually get ongoing and build a consistent audience. So for this exercise, we're talking about Google and how to actually build an ongoing evergreen audience. Because to make consistent revenue, you need to get consistent clicks to your content, consistent clicks on your affiliate links and your products and all of those things. So we need to capture and monetize this attention. And we want to make passive income, but there's no such thing as passive income. There really isn't. We can't just magically wave a wand and we start making money. We need to build a machine. We need to do build the actual infrastructure for ourselves and our life to get to passive income. So that's what I've learned over the last couple of years. It's like we need to build this machine, do the things at first that we don't like doing, and then build the machine that runs this whole sustainable thing for us. And first, the first part of this is uh, machine is actually the content assembly line, what I call. So this is what you actually write. This is actually what a blog is. This is what content is. This is the actual articles that are being written. So what do we do this? Well, here's the content assembly line in a nutshell. And I teach this in the course in a lot of different areas. But here's the, here's the thesis and hypothesis. Content takes time to rank. So you publish something on Google. It's not going to show up on page one right away. It typically takes months to show up and actually start climbing the ranks. So if not every single article is going to rank, how do we create a simple system, a simple process to get as many articles ranking in as quickly as possible? Well, what we do is we create minimum viable posts, MVPs. We start thinking like a startup. We create these MVPs that can rank and make the most money. By doing that, we don't create some magical 10,000 word article out of the gate and perfect it and write, add all these images and videos and make it the best article ever. That's actually how I started doing my blog at first. I wanted to make everything perfect because I was scared and paralyzed that people were going to read this thing and judge me. But I realized that I can create these transactional affiliate-based articles. Maybe I don't include the top 20 companies that we're going to review. But maybe it's just five. And then I publish it. And then updates over time. Blogs are living, breathing things. And to make money, it's not just choosing some magical niche and writing some magical content. It's using data and traffic numbers and impressions and seeing what's actually working and then using a content assembly method method and scaling the amount of content that you produce. So here's it in a nutshell. Step one is keyword research. We all know this. We have to conduct a keyword and write a keyword uh, to rank an article. One target keyword, one article. So we do keyword research and we can find these transactional articles to write in our niche. So when we think about what a blog is and what blog content is, whether you're a marketer or you're in an, any niche, what do blogs actually write? They write two different types of articles. It's really that simple. Transactional list posts and how-to informational posts. So let me cover these really quick. Informational posts are things like how to do things. So if you're a golf blog, you would write about how to swing a golf club, how to grip a golf club, how to chip, putt, grip, you know, all of those different things to make you look like an expert. However, you're not going to get monetized automatically by ranking for that stuff. You might be seen as an expert. They might join your email list but it's not going to make you affiliate revenue out of the gate. On the same blog, you would also have best irons, best drivers, best putters, best wedges, all of the products in the niche. So any niche has this, whether it's camping, outdoors, golf, kitchen, home, lifestyle, barbecues, software. Every niche has these things. There's products in the niche that you want to review, best XYZ. And then there's also how to do things in your niche. Typically, when you need to do things, you need products to do them. So you think about these two articles, and they're really easy to find with keyword tools. You search for how to plus your niche. You search for best plus your niche, and you'll find 
hundreds of potential articles that you can write. And we go through this process in depth in a lot of my other content. But first is keyword research. After you have your keyword, you create the content. So you can use a tool like Jasper integrated with you know things like Surfer SEO and Grammarly to create a minimum viable article. And that's really simple. You can use a tool like Surfer in their integration with Jasper. It literally tells you using machine learning what exact semantic keywords to include in the article. So to rank on Google, you first need to create an article that's optimized for search engines. So that includes things like properly you know, putting the headings in the right place and putting the words in the right place to trick Google into thinking that it is the best article because their machine learning scans every article on the World Wide Web to see what they think is good based on this has a bunch of good keywords in it, it's very robust. That's part of the MVP process is creating a minimum viable post that's optimized for search engines. And that can be done really quickly with things like Jasper and Surfer. You can write an article in like an hour or two max instead of spending you know eight hours on some grand masterpiece. So after that, yep. Do we have any, well, you want to stop here, Austin? Yeah, I was just going to add to that. You know, so many people here are new to the Jasper ecosystem as well. And so kind of giving context here, um, you know, Jasper is an AI that can write content for you. And since it's read 10% of the internet, it can write on any niche. Um, and so no matter what your blog is about, it can really help propel the assembly of content for you. Um, and Adam, before you had Jasper, about how long would it take you to write a MVP blog post from scratch? Well, I was, yeah, when I first started my blog, I wrote all the articles myself for the first like three to six months. And it would probably take me five or six hours to write an article, I would say, because I was putting in, I, for example, I did one on like best web, best web hosting. I still remember it. It was like a Saturday and I was spending my wonderful Saturday writing an article about web hosting. <laughs> and I had to, you know, put the individual companies in, do some research, write these things. And it, yeah, it was probably about five or six hours when I was doing it myself. And also back then you didn't have keyword research tools like a surfer SEO so not knowing exactly what keywords to include in that article so that you rank. Yeah, I was guessing. I was like, okay, so the keyword is, you know, so this one on screen here is like the best video editing software. But then it's like, all right, how many times do I actually add that term in? Like 10, 5, 80? I have no idea. And like people by themselves can't know these things because Google scans this stuff. And like Surfer's integration here with Jasper has it shows here. Video editing software is used six, pretty much 34 to 55 times in an article like this. Yep. And similarly, how Jasper scans the web surfer, also the integration, they scan all the top ranking articles to see the correlation and similarities to what Google is rewarding. So it gives you these simple things. And it's like, all right, add editing tools in four times, add edit videos in two to five times. And you start to just optimize the article over time. And this has a direct correlation to rankings. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you really think about it, like the path of progress before this new modern 2022 tech stack, um, the path of progress took a long time. Like it, took, it could take months or years to, you know, actually narrow in on the, you know, perfect blog post to get on page one. And now we're talking, how long do you think, Adam, you know, to create well, we'll get into the business aspect too, because I'd say like one hour potentially if I was going to write it, but we also want to get into the mindset of being a business owner and not being a writer. So using Jasper, but also maybe outsourcing Jasper as well to another freelancer or a person that can do it. So Absolutely. like today at this level of business, I have a content team that uses Jasper mm -hmm. and it's, it's really easy when you have that. And we can get into that too in the Q and A and stuff about how do you write as many optimized articles as you can in a simple way and how can you dictate the rules like get an 80 score in surfer get us you know do this in jasper use grammarly and get a 90 you start to dictate these rules to make you you get these really well assembled articles quickly awesome awesome so uh let's continue on i think they have context now for uh sure what jasper is so awesome so when we go back to it we create an article and then we hit publish basically and you know I have this slide. This is an article of mine on podcast hosting. You can see that blogging is a science. It's not an art. It's not creative writing. It's not being Ernest Hemingway and clacking away at the keyboard, staying up, trying to be the next great you know, writer of our time. It's People are scanning blogs for information. They skim articles. They don't necessarily read them, especially in, in the informational space. Think about a time that you've maybe 
maybe you were getting sick and you like searched your symptoms like we all do when we're, you know, um, scared online and we, we think we're all WebMD doctors. How much of that article did you read? Did you read every single word or did you like skim down to the paragraph you wanted? Same is true of information for the most part in these blog posts. So there's a direct way to optimize and structure a post with the right H2 headings, the right H3 headings, and the right formatting to make Google think that you have the best content also because it's you know organized the best way and it makes it easiest to pull into search engines. So this whole thing is a science. It's very easy to do if you just know, and I learned this, you know, some of the best SEO people in the world when I, that I was working with. I wouldn't have known this otherwise, but blogging is a science. It's not an art. So basically what happens is you publish an article. Now what? Well, you won't get traffic usually for a while because Google has to index it. And you could be on anywhere from page two, if you're really lucky, to page 10 or page 20. When I first started my blog, I'd publish an article and I'd be on page like eight or nine or 10 getting no traffic because no one ever goes that far down the, the search results. But as you build knowledge graph and as you start to get some traction and you start updating content, your rankings will improve over time. So, uh, you know, you create a minimum viable post because then you begin to see what these rankings are. You begin to see which ones should I update? Which ones should I optimize? Which ones should I work on that can start ranking and make me money? So you have to get to page one. You have to create these content for, for search engines. But content is only half the equation because what you write on the page is like half of what helps you rank on search engines. The other half is link building. So to do that, you need a link building machine as well. So we have what we call the content assembly line and we need a link building machine. So again, we'll show near the end too, like that link to the free link building training. Link building is a very deep subject and there's a lot of different opinions on it. It was probably the number one reason that my blog was so successful. It's because when I first started, I published some articles on my blog and then I shifted probably 75% of my focus to link building and guest blogging and building real relationships in the niche to actually get links because links are the sign of authority. Think of the web as a world wide web. If you're just starting a new blog on the outskirts of the web and no one is linking to you, Google's never going to trust you because Google wants to basically give the best possible information and the safest answer to the question because, you know, that's what their whole purpose is, is to organize the world's information and give you the best answers. So they trust sites that already have traffic. They trust sites that have links to them. It's just that simple. So no, not every single post needs links, but posts that are competitive, posts that make you life-changing money will need some links to them typically. And there's a big myth, myth as well of passive link building. So it's like, just create great content and you'll get links. Like just create an amazing article with infographics and all this stuff and you'll just, or statistics, and you'll get all these links. And that's just simply not true. The people that get links are the sites that are already ranking number one and two because they're the easiest to find and the easiest to source. So you have to actively do link building. However, there's a big problem today is that link building advice is outdated and not very good. There's tactics, there's individual tactics that are taught like guest blogging and broken link building and link reclamation and the skyscraper technique and all these different things of how to get links. But they fail to bring into account the human psychology of what links actually are. So links are like the currency of the internet. Links have intrinsic value. If I get a link to my blog, to an article, and that article can then rank and make real money in the real world, then that has value. I'm not going to just ask for it for free. And that's the problem. I, my inbox gets inundated with 50 plus requests a day. Can, can I guest post for you? Will you add this to your article? And there's nothing of value in return. So... There's two things to link building. One is you need to do it. You need to make it look as natural as possible, like you weren't even involved in it. And what I call is guest posts are the engine and partnerships are the fuel. And to do that, you need to build real relationships with people. So to do this, you also need to build an outreach and guest posting process and build real relationships with other bloggers. Like link building isn't a tactic. It's a value exchange. So there's, you know, in the, in the training that, that, you know, a hundred minute or so training that we sent you, We'll kind of pin it a little bit here because it's just such a deep topic and you can watch that full step-by-step -step training after this. But there's ways to think about link building from a human psychology perspective and really understand, try to understand what's in it for the other party. So for example, when I frame my link building, I don't say, you know, I want a link on your blog. I actually provide more value to them than they can to me. So you'll see here, I say I'm reaching out because I'm interested in collaborating on content. And then I also say, this is a key sentence here. I write four to six guest posts per month on other websites and can link to you in those. So links are like the currency of the internet. Links are traded. And this is 
you know, the truth that a lot of people don't really know is that links are traded. Bloggers, guest bloggers, people that are in the space and writing can, you know, write guest posts and link to other people and build partnerships. And there's like transactional links where companies might want to be included here. So you link to them there. And a lot of this stuff is based on relationships. It's not just write blog posts, write a hundred articles, and then you'll get traffic and make money. No, you need links to do that. You need real relationships to do it. Because most links, like when you look even at CNBC and CNN, how do they get their sources, right? They know people on Twitter. They have these relationships with sites like NerdWallet and TechRadar. And they know every time that I'm going to go for a retirement statistic, I'm going to contact my contact at NerdWallet to add this link in on CNN.com or something like that. So most links are based on relationships. So as individual bloggers, we need to just kind of understand that and tweak our outreach strategy a little bit and actually focus on it from the beginning. And it's not about sending a million emails out there, insanely putting yourself out there, but it's a strategy that you can implement with a little bit of the right messaging and just sending a few messages a day. So it's something that you can really build and then your snowball effect of authority, building your domain rating, ranking for more, more keywords, making more affiliate sales, the ability to get you sales makes you more links and it's this big snowball effect, effect of authority. Now, with all of that said, with the fact that basically the whole point of this, the whole point of creating a content business is to base, you know, we want to make passive income. We want to make money for ourselves. And to do that, we need to rank on Google. So when we think about it, though, everyone wants money right away. They want to say, how do I create? What's the niche? What's the secret niche? What's the secret formula that's going to make me money in like 30 days? And the truth is it doesn't exist. Monetization is a byproduct of ranking on Google for these specific things. And that is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. Whoever wins, whoever ranks has the best content and the best, you know, links. And it's typically, you know, you use SEO tools and then you update your content over time, maybe making it a little bit better for human readers, making the intro a little bit better, adding more companies into the post, you know, slowly evolving these things over time and making your content better and more optimized for search intent and what people actually want. That's pretty easy because that's just us behind a computer writing stuff. Then there's the link building side of building relationships with other people. And that's not too difficult either. You just do some simple email outreach. We don't have to get on the phone. But monetization is a byproduct of ranking. So you have to rank to make money. So how do you make money blogging in months and not years with all of that said? You have to treat your blog like a business. So we covered, you know, for blogging specifically in the Google algorithm, and making a website that makes you life-changing money, you need to understand, uh, have a content machine and a link machine at first to do these things because you're always going to be working on those two things as a blogger or as a content creator, getting links, you know, building relationships and creating content, those two things. To make money, we treat it like a business. So here's an example. Early on, this was about nine months into my blog back in 2019, I got early, in early on a keyword, uh, podcast hosting. So I still rank number one for it on Google. You can Google it right now and you'll see um, adamenfroy.com. Nine months in, I was ranked, I got in on the keyword early. It's like a 95, really competitive one now. But that's part of the things that we teach as well is like riding the waves and finding new opportunities in your niche because there's always new products, new things to write about. But I started ranking really well for podcast hosting somewhere on page one. So I joined the affiliate programs. I added some companies into my post here and I was making like, couple hundred dollars a month and it was like three or four hundred dollars a month and then one of the companies reached out to me and they said hey we i want you to put us number one in the article they weren't number one at the time they said we'll pay you four thousand dollars a month if you put us number one in the article and at this time i wasn't making all that much money yet from affiliate marketing i was making a little bit of money like doing some consulting stuff and trying to build this blog so that was really game changing for me to see, holy crap, a company is going to pay me $4,000 a month just to be moved up the list. So I did it and I actually said, actually, can it be 5,000? Because I, I had the experience at my previous job seeing that that's actually not much to these companies. So I said, could you make it five? And they said yes to that. So then I added them number one. And now that article, instead of making 500 a month, was making $5,000 a month. And that was one of my early thoughts. I was like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. That's $60,000 a year from one article. What is, you know, and over the course of time, I have learned so much and I just, you know, you have to think bigger when it comes to blogging. So I was making $60,000 a year instead of around $500 a month. And that was just based on one email from an inbound person asking me for that. 
And then I started thinking, well, what other article, what other random articles are on my blog that I can monetize and how do I monetize them in different ways? So for example, like I wrote one on screenwriting software a while ago. It's software. It's about people that want to write screenplays and be the next Quentin Tarantino or something not completely related to blogging, right? Or email marketing or digital marketing. But this one, um, if you look at it, a company reached out and they're like, put us number one, we'll pay you $2,500 a month. Like, okay, definitely. And then I had final draft in here. They were number one for a while. They were making probably $500 a month through the affiliate links. And then I actually also have ads in this post. So between $2,500 a month for the first spot, 500, this post is probably making $3,200 a month for one random post on screenwriting software, something that I don't really know all that much about, but I know very good SEO and <laughs> link building and, and monetization techniques. So when you think about that, it's like that's $3,200 a month just for this one random article out of hundreds. Then there's one on OCR software. What's OCR software? Well, I didn't know. I found it in Ahrefs. It's optical character recognition software. It basically turns a PDF and it makes you able to edit it. So I found that one. Now, one, another company was paying me $1,000 a month for that article. And as you see on the right and the bottom, there's ads in the article. So I'm like, okay, there's another random article making money. Then, you know, a little bit later in my blog, um, especially when COVID came, there was a ton of search volume around webinar stuff. So I wrote an article uh, about webinar software and it started to rank really well. And then, you know, through COVID, people were searching for it a ton and it still has decent search volume. But this individual article makes me $15,000 a month through one sponsorship and all of my mainly affiliate links. So there's another one. And when we start to add all these things up and then there's another post on business ideas. So business ideas is a broader term that I rank for. I think I'm on page two, but through all the variations, it gets a ton of traffic. Um, that one's only ads. Like there's some affiliate links in the article, but you know, something as broad as business ideas. I don't know if they want to start a lawn care company. I don't know if they want to start a, you know, agency. So that link to Bluehost to start a blog isn't really effective. So we, we cover this and talking about search intent and how to monetize based on search intent. But this one gets a lot of traffic. So it has ads. So this one makes $5,000 a month in affiliate revenue. Every article on a blog is its own business. That is a key. And that's something I learned over the years is that, wow, like an article on OCR software can make me $1,000 a month. That could be like my rent years ago. I, I paid that in rent or $2,500 a month. That could be basically most of my bills, you know? And it's like, that's kind of crazy to think about. And all it requires is treating your blog like a business. All of these were pretty much inbound sales, not anything like I didn't reach out to these companies. They were asking me based on actually ranking for these keywords and content link building. It was all the content link building that I did. And the truth is you can do this over and over and over again in any niche. I did it in one of the most competitive niches out there, software and make money online niche. In the span of a couple of years, I basically passed all the old, you know, so-called influencers that taught this stuff since 2010. And I just want to kind of stress that this opportunity is a lot bigger than you think. So when we look at like the trajectory of our business, 2022, we're aiming and we'll probably hit around $4 million in revenue. And... We're just seeing as we grow out this, you know, blog, content, blogging, YouTube, courses, sales, all these different funnels and revenue streams. It's easy actually to see that where this is going to be a $10 million business in the next couple of years. It's actually a big failure if it isn't. So, and I didn't even know that existed when I first started my blog in 2019. I remember driving to work in my truck with you know nine website visitors in the morning i'm like hey that's pretty cool some people are hitting my website and then making the first 500 and then a thousand and now it's like man if we make any less than two hundred thousand dollars a month it's kind of a failure we need to start scaling more so your perspective changes but the principles apply and i want to keep stressing these things and i'll show you like here's one from partner stack one affiliate dashboard where there's th about thirty thousand a month or this was January's Bluehost sales just for Bluehost was 9,700 that month. So it just it's endless the amount of stuff you can write about. And it doesn't have to be software either. This is true in any niche. Outdoor gear, think of all the amounts of products that are out there or kitchen gadgets or tech. There's so many potential niches that you can write about and make all this money in. Mediavine ads, so getting about 12,800 in January, 2022 from that. So it's just kind of an endless stream of different revenue streams that keep growing on itself. So the more that you can capture this attention online to serve your life on Google, 
And the more that you can monetize that attention in different ways, it just keeps growing on itself. Blogs are living, breathing things. And the great thing is the more you do it, the more you know traction you get, the more money you make. And it just has a snowball effect of authority. And the profit margins on a blog, my blog, if you look at 1.5 to 1.1 in profit, it's about a 75% margin. So take home pay of $1.1 million. Now that's before taxes. So I probably took on like 800,000 after taxes. But if we think about how do you make $1.1 million today as a business owner in take home profit, you know, before taxes? Well, to do that, my blog has 75% profit margin. And when we think about it in a business sense, to make $1.1 million profit in the real world, we'd have to run either 10 Starbucks locations. So that's based on their profit margin. I would have to spend about three to $4 million in startup capital to open those 10 Starbucks. And that's you know what I would need. I would probably need at least you know, 100 or 200 employees. I don't know how much each <laughs> Starbucks location have, but it sounds like a lot of a headache. Or I would need to run 28 subways the average subway store owner makes $42,000 in profit a year, selling um, about 400000 in top line revenue at a 10% margin. And I would need $4.2 to $9.2 million in startup capital to open up those 28 subways. I'd be dealing with all kinds of employees, all kinds of inventory. I'd have regional managers trying to go from different locations to make sure they're operating correctly. We'd have teenagers you know, being hung over and not showing up to work. It would be a mess. It would be very confusing. And the, the opportunity is out there to create a real business for yourself on Google, on YouTube, on these platforms, and start for like $3 a month with web hosting. And you can create these businesses that would surpass owning tons of franchise locations, and it's all online, and it's all a lot easier to manage with just a few people. So that's basically the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how to run a blogging business, how to outsource and, and manage a team and kind of scale up as you grow. But I want to kind of leave you with this is the three secrets of turning your, your content, your blog into a money making machine. Number one, again, monetization is a byproduct of ranking, which is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. You focus on the inputs, not the outputs. Everyone wants to make money overnight and start adding AdSense to their blogs and adding the affiliate links right away. The more that you do that, the less you focus on content and links. That's what gets you to these opportunities. Now, anyone can write articles. Anyone can use tools to create SEO optimized articles, but it takes real business tactics to make you real money. If you want to become an online business owner and create a business like this, the opportunity is out there, but you can't treat it like a hobby. You can't, you can, you don't have to spend an unlimited and absorbent amount of time on it. You could probably spend 10 hours a week on a business like this and still be successful, but you have to treat it like a business. And finally, you have to start thinking bigger. And I did not know these things. There wasn't anyone teaching me these things three years ago when I started, but the opportunity is bigger than you think. A $10 million a year business, a $100 million a year business actually isn't that big. And I'm realizing that like you can have a tiny, I could be a niche Google, you know, blog and YouTuber that never gets noticed at the airport. No one knows who is. It's kind of a random dude, but I could have a couple hundred students in a mastermind, you know, some few thousand course students. You'd be making, you know, two, a couple hundred articles ranking for affiliate revenue and be making like $50 million a year. And the opportunity is out there for many, many, many people to do this in many different niches. So is the world, is the, you know, online, is it saturated? A little bit. But if you can actually apply the right strategies for the 2020s, anyone can jump in this opportunity and it can really serve your life. Like there's no reason that everyone shouldn't have a blog as a digital backup plan. I think the weird thing is relying on one job because what happens if you lose that job? So a blog, content business, something that you're growing to build a passive income machine in your life only brings more stability. So I just want everyone to start thinking bigger when it comes to that. So that's my main presentation. And then Austin, we can get into the Jasper mastermind. Yeah, sure thing. So um, I know that you guys have some burning questions. So post them now uh, if you haven't already. I have a couple uh, of the questions pinned that we'll get to. Um, and we'll do like a rapid fire. And then uh, I can deep dive into content in a bit. But here for the next five to 10 minutes, uh, I'll share about the Jasper Mastermind. Um, and I know that throughout the content, uh, we'll also answer some of the questions. So uh, let's roll through. Um, all right, let me share my screen here. So let me stop sharing mine real quick. Thank you. 
Yeah, so pretty good content, guys. Uh, you all like that? If you had a nugget, do a hashtag nugget and then share something that really stuck out to you, uh, what Adam said. And I personally really liked what you said, Adam, about, um, let's see here. I liked what you said on how you relate this with, you know, having a in-person business like a, um, like a subway or something like that, you know, your profit margin per subway is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The restaurants are like typically six or 7%. A subway might be like 10%, but yeah, it's pretty low. And like a healthy business, the more I read about like a healthy business is like 10, considered 10%. An amazing business is 15. So we're in this age where you can get to like, if I were to cut off a lot of costs and expenses, like I could be at 90%, but we're investing a lot to keep growing. Totally. Yeah. Well, I love it. Well, guys, you know, when I first met Adam, um, you know, and I heard his story here, I was like, this is pretty amazing. And, you know, in the Jasper tool, I'm always looking at how people are using Jasper in all these unique ways, especially when paired with surfer and they're not just doing it for fun. Cause there's some people that just write stories and stuff. And I think that's awesome. But you know, there's people that are actually making their full-time living off of this tool. And so when I first heard what, Adam was doing, I thought I, I got to get on a call with him and see if he'd be open to sharing these strategies. So, um, yeah, this is just the beginning. Uh, but of course each of the individual subjects along the way are, uh, need like a deep dive. And so that's when we started thinking, how would a partnership look like where beyond the tool, we know that our community needs help with writing content, hiring, scaling, the accountability and community that are all doing this together at the same time. And Adam already had a course along with this. So I was like, Hey, Adam, could we figure out a way in which we license your course um, at a discount, of course, for the Jasper community, and then have some kind of ongoing accountability and community to help you along the way? Because inevitably, there's going to be a lot of questions that come up. And so, uh, you know, beyond the tool, how can you actually get results? Jasper is a part of that, but we know it's not the full thing. And so, um, yeah, that's what we asked uh, to be done. And a couple of months later, the birth of the Jasper Mastermind. Uh, cohort one started in December, just about 60 days ago. And there's been a lot of great results. Um, and so today we are opening cohort number two. Pumped about this. Um, it is your fastest path to building a profitable content business. And yeah, so it has ultimately the first thing you get with it. So like we realized a lot of this stuff to create a profitable content business is very nuanced. So we want the most personalized possible help that we can provide. And one of it is, you know, you get access to my course blog growth engine right away, which we normally sell for $2,997. That's got 10 modules you get instantly access to not dripped out or anything like that. So you get it right away. We cover, you know, the unique authority flywheel, like how to actually find your niche based on your life, your individual life and your professional and personal experience. We dive into the mindset of being an, uh, a business owner, blogging like a startup, these startup principles, MVP, pivoting data, thinking like a scientist. Then we talk about search intent, because that's really kind of the backbone of everything, how to actually give people what they want online. Then we actually go through a click by click screen share of how to build a website. So even if you have a website, you can see what plugins and settings to use. If you go to the next slide, Austin, um, there's over 30 hours of video in this, in this course. So a lot to consume. Then we cover keyword monetization, exactly how to find your first 20 keywords and posts to write how to create the content with Jasper, how to create it with surfer, how to optimize the post and publish it all the link building stuff, the free training you're getting today, plus a lot more videos on link building, exactly how to do it and build your authority. And then all the monetization strategies really in depth, how to negotiate these deals, how these companies, how did they actually come to me and ask like to be put in that spot, how to create these like a simple contract type things where you're getting more money, how to make money th more through affiliate revenue, monetizing with, you know, all these different ways that you make money. And then finally outsourcing and scaling. So that's really important because like, my team now is eight people. And when I first started, I was a team of one. And then by month, like three to four, I hired my first writer and was a team of two, but I was making a little bit of money. Then by month six, I hired person three, which was like a kind of a VA outreach assistant. So there's ways to like kind of scale your team and hire A players 
as you're going without going in the red. We don't want to like quit our job, go on the red, spend a bunch of money and then, you know, hire a bunch of people and start this blog. There's ways to effectively grow this by putting in a little bit of investment, making a little bit more and growing it up over time. So those are the 10 modules you get right away as the first thing that you get access to in the mastermind. So yeah, regular sold for about $3,000. We've had um, in the first cohort of Jasper, we had over 300 and something students through that. We also have 570 plus students in the blog growth engine course paying that full price for it. We've had great success with a lot of these students. We actually have one of our blog coaches that does unlimited coaching calls in the mastermind. Click a Calendly link and our, our team of coaches will talk to you. He's making four to $5,000 a month now. Uh, and he just started his blog less than a year ago. So he quit his job. He's now one of our coaches. He's making you know, all this money passively through affiliate revenue. We've also had a, you know, a girl make 10K in the first couple months. Um, we have another student that has over 100,000 visitors to his blog, making you know, five to 8K a month in affiliate and basically ad revenue. So it's really an investment and the coaching is, and the personalized coaching really is where it's at. Love it. Yeah, it's a really solid course. And that's obviously why I reached out to you. Uh, before teaming up with Adam here, I went through his course. Uh, I talked to people that had um, purchased it. And I wanted to make sure that it was something we would want to put our name alongside. And so, um, yeah, you can put our badge on it, that this is a really solid piece of content. Um, and it's only getting better. I know that Adam, you recently, uh, updated the course with about seven new hours of content. Yeah. So we, you know, my business partner, Colin and I were both on video in full HD. Uh, and we, you know, once you get access to the course, you get access to all updates for life. So we just shot another 20 videos last week that we're actually going to be uploading as well, probably next week into the course. So you get in there, we're going to be, this is the best blogging course already in the world, but we're trying to make it so good with ongoing coaching, one-on-one -on -one answers, all of these things that um, you get access to all these updates for life. So we're just going to keep growing it over the course of years. It's a single product. We're not going to abandon it at any point. I love it. Yeah. So uh, some more things that we thought might be very helpful for you to make progress on building an income through your blog is a more niche committed community. One that is on the same path with you because inevitably there's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up that isn't mentioned specifically in the course, or um, maybe it's specific to you and you need that question answered fast. So that's where you have uh, the more advanced community. Um, also every Wednesday, uh, you have Adam or a coach go live with you and you can answer, ask any questions that are burning. Uh, and so you can mark your calendars for that and just know that you can come with a list of questions and they'll get answered and then you can move on uh, and continue making progress. Yeah. What's nice in the course is like you go through the course, you go through all the hours of content, you have a framework of understanding of how to run an online business. The things that took me about eight years to learn, we package it into one thing. And then as you go through, you interact with other people doing the exact same thing, building content businesses, ask any question in that community, and then we'll give you a loom answer. So like a loom screen share video answer. And we do the regular Q and A's every week, which are pretty small. Actually, it's usually like 15 to maybe 30 people max in a room. Sometimes just 12 people, sometimes 10. It just depends uh, on Wednesday if people are busy or not. Um, and then, you know, they bring any questions. We do like blog post reviews. So people will share links. Be like, what did I do right here and wrong? What should I go after from a keyword perspective? So a lot of good learnings to be had there. And then obviously the one-on-one -on -one coaching to take it to the next level if you have very specific questions. Sweet. Yeah. Um, also, as a member of the Mastermind, we're going to be doing live uh, in-person events here in the Austin, Texas headquarters at Jasper. Um, our next event is March 4th, uh, and we already have uh, a couple dozen people flying out or driving out to uh, join us. And so that will be a full day event. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we also cool. know that we want to invest deeply into this community and build more uh, helpful features within Jasper. Uh, that are specific to the people who are writing a lot of blog content and specifically for growing uh, SEO. And so that's why uh, we are using this community as a testing pool for the newest features. So you'll get early access to all features and help contribute to the roadmap. And so if you want to get deeply, deeply involved here in, um, in Jasper Nation, then this is a way for you to influence the roadmap. Cool. 
Um, you know, we also wanted to give you some bonuses here. So uh, when you get started with the Jasper Mastermind, we're going to uh, load up your Jasper account with 50,000 bonus words that roll over, uh, over and over. So, um, you know, for as long as um, you are a Jasper customer, you'll have access to these 50,000 extra words. Um, and so you can do 10,000 words a month for five months, whatever it looks like for you. Uh, but we want to get you uh, set up for success here to get rolling fast. Um, we'll also be doing ongoing coaching and support. Adam, could you hit on this a little bit deeper? Yeah. So once you go through the course and if we, if you just can't get an answer in the community or, you know, you have a very specific questions, you want to jump on a one-on-one -on -one actual call, then that's when you can do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And like, there's a lot of nuance around certain questions like, what niche do I pick? Like, is the opportunity here in this professional experience or is it this personal experience? Like where exactly do I go? Or if you're stuck on, I'm stuck on this certain affiliate, like how am I going to monetize this post with affiliate links or this certain type of outreach? What is my unique value proposition in all of my link building? How can we find that? So blogging is very nuanced. There's a lot of like the, the fundamental digital marketing principles apply and, you know, doing these things in the 2020s works, but also there's like a lot of this nuance in certain questions. So any of those, it's just a direct line, ongoing, unlimited coaching calls when you join. I love it. Um, cool. So you can go ahead to jasper.ai slash mastermind um, and you'll see all of the details, uh, but we covered a lot of it today. Uh, for cohort two, normally it'd be $2,400, but we're going to be giving you guys a five, $400 discount uh, for $19.99 per year uh, and includes all of those member benefits. Uh, if you're not ready to commit to a full year, we also have a monthly price, uh, normally $2.99. And for this cohort, we're giving you a $50 per month discount. So it's $2.49 a month. You get access to the full course. You get access to the community, the ongoing support uh, like Q&As, one-on-one coaching, uh, the live events, um, all of that together here in cohort number two, uh, mastermind deal. So head on over to jasper.ai slash mastermind, and you can see a summary of all of your benefits as a member there. Uh, for you all that are still on the fence and you want to see if the course actually meets the hype, if you want to see uh, if the community is as valuable as uh, we're saying it is right now, uh, we're giving you a full five-day money-back guarantee you can kick the tires in there once you pay. And if it is not meeting your expectations, just email us at support at adaminfoy.com and we'll get you refunded the full amount. So uh, if that sounds good to you, go to jasper.ai slash mastermind and you'll get instant access as soon as you're on the other side of the checkout page. Yeah. Um, now we're only opening this for seven days. We're basically doing classes or cohorts. So um, about every three to four months, we're going to be opening up the doors again. So right now is your opportunity to get in. Uh, if now is not the right time, that is okay. But just know that we're not going to allow any new students coming in for the next three months. So it is really just here uh, for the next seven days that you can hop into the course. Yep. Um, our members are making progress fast. Uh, we already have a lot of results from cohort number one, which was in December. So this is pretty cool. Um, you know, we have Crystal here uh, that is getting her problem solved fast, and she's already uh, on number 22, and she just launched her blog. Uh, we have people here that their traffic is growing, uh, and he has several 75 or higher backlinks pointing to his blog, uh, building his domain authority. Uh, we have people getting their scores very high, very fast, uh, people showing love. And really just being authentic, like we're all on the path together. This is what it actually looks like to build a blog. It's not sugarcoated. It is legitimately the step-by-step play-by-play for um, building a, a an income through your blog. Yeah, we want to have fun in the group too. It's like, you know, when we think about <clears throat> the investment and joining this community, um, it's really like an experience to be had with one another. And like, there's a lot we can le both learn from each other and then collaborate with each other. And so we can do both of those things and see each other grow. And like really the ROI on something like this is incredible. If you think about the perspective of students that we have making, you know, $4,000 a month, well, what's the ROI year one on that? What's the ROI year five on that? It's really astronomical if you apply the principles and build this thing. 
So again, blogging kind of interesting because it's not like you find success in a week, right? It's not like you're going to join this mastermind and then two weeks later, you're going to be making money. But maybe two months later, you might start trickling in money. And then a year from now, you're going to be making, you know, potentially a lot more. So it really depends on you like sticking consistently to really being your own advocate and building an online business for yourself that you're ready to start doing as a background of your life for the next couple of years so that you can actually build something for yourself. And it can change your life. You know, my life looks so much different than it did when I was working full time and building this blog on the side. But we kind of have to if we if our goal is time freedom or to spend more time with our family or make money passively, we have to really be business owners for a little bit. Like there were seven months where I worked really hard on this blog while working full time. And this was a side hustle. And now it's given me the freedom in my life to take some time off and do that. But now I'm back at it. Like now I'm I'm ready to keep growing this thing, but I get to do it for myself, not for anybody else. So we're all there. We want to have fun. We post random updates in there and I'll be in Austin next week um, in March. So it'll be great to meet everybody there. Hopefully you can go. And yeah, it's just a really fun community to be in. Yeah. So if you get started today, you're welcome to join us um, next Friday here in Austin. Um, I think it's time to go through some of the questions. Yeah. So Adam, um, you currently sell your course at $3,000, right? Yep. And they're getting access to the entire course, whether they go annual or monthly. Correct. Yeah. You get, so access you can get a $3,000 course for uh, $249 a month. Yep. And this is the, the only place that, you know, I try as a business owner, I try to limit my time to what is very cost effective. And like I do YouTube videos, I do access in this community, but I do not do any outside of this community. I do not do any like I don't sell coaching. I don't do any of that stuff. This is like the only community that I actively participate in. Cool. Um, and is this for you if you're just now starting a blog and maybe you don't even have a, a domain and website yet? Definitely. So we go over exactly how to find your niche, how to choose your domain name, click by click, set up your website, how to do it with WordPress, which theme to use specifically, which SEO plugins to use, how to create the articles, everything. So it's like basically a click by click to help you do that. It's it's good for non-technical people. It's good if you're just starting out and don't have a blog. It's also good if you have a blog. If you're not making, even if you're making some money, we want to we want to grow your blogging business. So whether you're not making anything and want to get started and want the framework, or even if you're making $500,000 a year with your blog, but you feel like you're stagnating. This is also for you to grow it to $5 million a year. So it's, it's, we're teaching every step of the way as we learn. Now, if you're a marketer at a company, let's say a brand, and you have your own products that you want to sell on your website, is the information in this course and the community around it going to be helpful for increasing your own sales from your own company? So Specifically, this course is mainly around the keyword research, the search intent, link building, and, and monetization paths of a blogger. However, the content and link building uh, systems apply to any brand. I learned these at a SaaS company. So they were selling an e-commerce platform, a software, a piece of software and doing it themselves. So the, the strategies for a blogger and those types of businesses are very similar. But this is mainly promoting um, you know, for bloggers. However, we're thinking about adding modules as well for marketers, things around like if you're an e-commerce brand, like how do you get category pages to rank? What are you so that, you know, keyword research is always going to be the same. You just go after slightly different things. Like if you're a software company, instead of my blog that covers all kinds of different software and reviews, if I'm one specific software, like an e-commerce platform, well, then I do the exact same strategies in the course from a content link building perspective, but I just go deeper into e-commerce. I start writing things about like e-commerce email marketing and how to do exit intent pop-ups in e-commerce and all these specific, more specific things in that niche. So the niche changes, but the strategies of this course don't really change. So if you're an agency owner, if you're a marketer at a company, the strategies will apply. Cool. Um, all right. So I'll continue looking at... Um, some other ones here. We got some, all right. Uh, quick question. This is, you know, the burning question everybody has is, does it matter what website platform I host my blog on? And some of the ones mentioned in the chat, Squarespace, WordPress, Webflow, Wix, you know, sure. uh, what do you use? So this course, we, you know, there's so much around that idea. Like if you're creating a business, there's so much more like, it's kind of like saying, 
Okay, so we do say WordPress, and I think WordPress is, you, you look at any blog that's doing well from an SEO standpoint, and it's WordPress for a number of reasons, extensibility, customability, customization, SEO, it's just easy to manage articles. There's no reason why it shouldn't be WordPress. Um, I actually started my blog on Squarespace, of all things, when I first started. Um, and that was a mistake I learned quickly because I was having issues with SEO and meta tags and all these different things that I, I made the switch to WordPress. But, you know, my focus has always been we get a lot of questions around like what platform is right? What perfect SEO tool do I need? What, you know, how do I optimize my site speed? How do I do all these things that are just surface level? That's like me owning a gym and saying, what are the bricks made of on the outside? What is the glass made of? How do I optimize and, you know, make the door handle right? Like, Ultimately, if you want to run an online business, you have to do the content, do the link building and worry less about perfecting every detail. So we want to give you the business strategy, the real business strategy to make a business, to make money. And yes, yeah, to answer it's WordPress, yeah. but I'll it's say WordPress. Not, one of the most now you got things. your start though on Wix because it was easy, right? Squarespace. Yeah. So it was just like I set it up and then it was easy to transfer. So no matter what you use, like we have a... a uh, uh, my business partner, Colin, and I, uh, you know, through the seven months of planning the course, we, we found the cheapest, most effective WordPress tech stack. So if you join, you're not going to be spending a bunch of X like, OK, I joined this. Then do I have to buy a bunch of tools? Well, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. We use um, we recommend WordPress with you can get either Bluehost or you can get WPX, which has really good support. And then we have like two options for themes. There's WP Astra and then there's Cadence and Cadence gives you like a really nice looking website. My website looked like garbage when I first started. I've told it to other people like I had a, a logo that I didn't even pay for. I like made it myself. And then instead of paying for it with like the filter on it, I just like screen shared it and stuck it on there. But you know what? It worked. And that's the thing about a blog. You can always update later. Um, we give you the exact tech stack that we recommend because it's just a quicker path. We want to give you the quickest path and the things that I learned that I made mistakes on. So you don't have to make those mistakes. Yep. Um, cool. So we're going to do uh, some more ones here. Uh, is Jasper included in the mastermind? Uh, no, this is for everything beyond the tools. So they are separate subscriptions. You can cancel one without the other. Uh, if you don't need the coaching anymore, or if you don't want to use the tool anymore, they are separate. You can continue. You don't have to be a customer of Jasper to be in the mastermind. But of course, uh, Adam shows you exactly how to use Jasper within it uh, and has multiple modules on it, how he uses the surfer. So uh, they work hand in hand. Um, but of course, you can make your own decisions as a business owner and blog business owner, which tools you want to use. Yeah, when you think about tools, it's like, okay, so we have web hosting, we need to actually store our website somewhere. Um, that's, you know, Bluehost is like $3 a month. WPX might be $15 or $20 a month. And then it's like we do typically recommend something like Ahrefs, although it's a nice to have. Like you need it. You don't need it all the time. You can do a month of it. They, they did have a seven-day trial for $7. That's like the keyword research tool you want. Maybe get Surfer. But to run an online business, you don't need 10 tools. Mm -hmm. I started with MailChimp for email marketing for free, Bluehost, and that was about it. So you don't need all those things right out of the gate. You can do some keyword research in Google Keyword Planner if you want to from the very beginning and slowly invest over time. But when we think about it, if we really do want to make money as an online business owner, can we afford you know, to spend $500 a month on this business? I think we should be able to if, we want, if we're serious about it. You know, We don't have like those Subway stores. We don't have to spend $400,000 to open that store. We don't have an inventory. We don't have employees. We don't have a building. We don't have licensing. We tried to make it as effective as possible if you're just starting out for a good price point. Yep. So cool. Um, another question here is what is, uh, do you think is the minimum word count needed for, uh, to publish a blog post? Very niche dependent. You could answer a question effectively, like a specific answer in a paragraph and Google might reward that, but we don't really go over those. What is type keywords depends on your niche, but something we typically teach you how to write transactional aff affiliate posts that make you revenue and also how to informational posts. And we can do that based on surfer. How long is the competition? Uh, typically I write every article at least 2000 words um, before we publish, but that's in the software niche. So it really is niche dependent and there's a really cool cool tool called the word counter plus you can just go to search a keyword on google 
click, right click, see how many words are in these articles. And you know, it's tricky. We, this is one that we teach in the search intent modules because it's not about word count. It's about answering the search intent. I can actually answer, you know, an, uh, somebody's question better in a thousand words maybe than I could in 2000. So Google, the old days of like, I'm going to write, this person has the top 10 software. I'm going to make the top 11 or 15 and it's going to be longer. Well, that's not usually rewarded anymore. What's rewarded is ending the search journey. And that's considered, that's the ultimate ranking factor. When somebody clicks on your blog, they search for something, they click on your blog. Do they go back and then click on another blog and then end that search? Or do they end it on yours? So we teach you exactly how to do that. Word count is part of it, but it's if, as long as you're mastering search intent, giving people the broad best answer to the widest audience based on what they actually want to read, it doesn't matter how long it is. Cool. Um, thanks for answering that. Is uh, this for those who are blogging veterans that have had a blog, uh, maybe already have some income coming through it, or they were thinking it like a journal before and posting about you know things going on in their lives, and now they're like, actually, I would like to make money with this. Is this for people that have been doing blogging for a long time? Yeah, absolutely. I think like the main audience is anyone that's making less than a million dollars a year with their blog or anyone making less than $5 million a year with their blog. Because as we learn and as we grow, we can teach every step of the way. So we have everything from just getting started, you know, how to set up the site, how to get your first 10 keyword research articles done and optimized, how to start link building and find your leverage points. We also go into how to hire your first people, how to find A players, how to outsource writing, how to do link building, how to outsource those types of things. So, and there's a lot of startup principles that aren't really taught anywhere else. So if somebody else was teaching blogging um, this way, they, you know, a lot of people that teach blogging don't really do it, so to speak. So that's a big problem. We've started, I've started my YouTube channel and I see that a lot of people that teach stuff don't actually do the thing that they're teaching. Everyone wants to jump in, start something, and then 30 days later, start teaching how they do that thing. Well, it just doesn't work that way. So through this, you know, this system, it's pretty new. There's a reason it worked for me as quickly as it did. And there's a reason that we're sitting here. It's because it really works if you do it. So I think for anyone can get value out of that. Cool. Um, how do we join? You go to jasper.ai slash mastermind. Uh, if you're on the live stage, uh, there's a button at the top and a button down below um, and you'll see how to uh, get started. Um, all right. Is Google penalizing robotic written content? Can Google ban the site? Since no, I mean, there's not really a way to know that as long as it's not plagiarized, as long as like, you know, when, when you use Jasper, it's not taking the exact content plagiarized from the web it's creating unique content. So there's really not a good way. Google's not smart enough to necessarily know the difference yet between those things, it can tell if it's been duplicated. But when Google scans an article, they're just reading the text. It's a machine AI reading every single word on the page and then reading this, the relationships between links, what's pointing to that article, what internal links are on it. So it's just scraping billions of web pages. So it wouldn't necessarily, it would be kind of hard to know, did a robot write that and then be penalized? Like, no, I don't think so. Yeah, and I think you know it comes from uh, a lack of knowing how the AI writes. So quick quiz for everyone. Does Jasper write uh, in chunks like paragraphs? Does it write sentence by sentence or does it write one word at a time? And the answer is one word at a time because it's read 10% uh, of the internet in 2019. So it's read all of these articles, Wikipedia's, blog articles. It's read captions on uh, content like podcasts that are open to the public and YouTube videos. So it's consumed a ton of content. And then what it's doing is predictably writing what the next word is based on an algorithm. And so you have to realize it's not pulling and citing any sources. But if you really want to be sure, then that's why you could activate inside of Jasper. We've teamed up with Copyscape, which is the top plagiarism checker on the internet, and just click scan content. And then it'll tell you if you have to cite any sources. 99% of the time, it is plagiarism free. So um, no 
you can't uh, – Google does not recognize when content's written by AI. AI. Uh, people don't recognize it. It's actually solving their problems. Um, yeah. Yeah. That kind of brings up some other questions too. It's like what about – we get a lot of those questions kind of, I I'd, I'd consider them kind of worried questions and I don't mean to be mean or anything. And it's a good question, but I get a lot of those in the group. It's like, well, can we, should we do link partnerships? Cause are we going to get penalized or what should we do for the product review update? If we don't review the product or are we going to get penalized for this or penalized for that? I can say those things are just kind of mindset perfectionism. That's kind of holding you back. So if I worried about all of those details, I would not be, you know, where I am today with my blog. And it's because you have to forge ahead fearlessly. And you do these things based on not just worrying about individual algorithm updates, but we created this course so that you future proof, future, I can't speak, future proof your site based on search intent. So we're always going after what actually, what, what people actually want to read because that's the end goal, ending the search journey, end the search journey, end the search journey. Don't worry about a product review update. If you have the best content and it's formatted the right way, you will still win. doesn't matter if a robot wrote it or your mom wrote it. Like if you just put these strategies into practice and not worry about all the little tiny details of penalization, you're going to find a lot more success. Nikki asks, is this an efficient, uh, is this efficient for a fashion blogger looking to create an affiliate blog? Absolutely. So I love like a lot of people that come into this course, sometimes they say, well, Adam's done software, business software, I'm going to try it too. And it can be a little bit disheartening just because it's very competitive. And there's so many good e-commerce niches, fashion being one of them that are just basically ripe for the taking because we live in this world in between these old tiny niche sites and big media sites taking over. So we, we talk in the course about living in the middle. So what that means is there's a lot of tiny sites that might just write about like one individual little thing, like a specific type of fashion. Or we found a blog that's just about sinks and faucets. Or we found one that's just about paintball. And it's like these tiny little sites that have a domain rating of zero to 20. And what we can do is we can take these content link building strategies, build a real brand for ourselves, and put ourselves above these niche sites, dominate multiple sub niches, and pick up the scraps that the big media sites never go after. So we can make a ton of money living in the middle. And e-commerce has so many opportunities because we talk about riding the wave of your niche. Timing is the crucial component of keyword research that no one talks about. You can't find it in a report like in Ahrefs. But knowing your niche, knowing what are new products coming up in your niche, what are new product categories? For example, you know, we found in the kitchen space, there might be something like, I want to write about the best refrigerator. Well, that's kind of old. The best microwave, that's probably been around. These articles have been written 10, 15 years ago. So we kind of think like Shark Tank. It's like, well, what is what about best touchless kitchen faucet? What about Traeger Grill versus Grill Master or Pit Master? What about these emerging products? Because guess what? There's always new products. Think about Amazon. There's always new things being created. So there's always new product categories that we can write about. And if we can spot these trends in our niche before other big sites, then the competition doesn't exist because getting in early actually is something that happens. You get in early, you start getting some links to your stuff, and then you build a moat around your content and no one can beat you. Some of the articles I wrote three years ago, if I wrote them today, I would never rank because it's simply too late. So finding those opportunities are important. And fashion is a good one because fashion, there's high-end fashion. Affiliate commissions are based on the price of the product and the commission rate. And there's an endless amount of different types of fashion and clothing and accessories and things that you can write about. We even talk about like, you know, look at best luxury watches. Rolex is like $8,000. Make a commission on that. Or high-end dresses, those are really expensive. Make a commission on that. There's always high-priced new emerging products that you can write about. It's about finding them early and it's about you know optimizing them and doing these things. So yes, fashion is a good, good niche to go after. Uh, what if I'm a coach with a specific niche? Uh, I'm interested in supporting my vision, but not necessarily being um, a blogger. Uh, is this something you know I should do? Um. So this is a tricky one. I would say this is a blogging course. So probably not. Um, we don't teach that. We teach how, if you want to grow an online business though, like I consider myself a coach, I would say now. I wasn't always one at the beginning, um, but getting a lot of inbound traffic, getting these opportunities in my life, learning how to be decent on camera, on YouTube, doing all of these things have helped me become a coach. So I think that having a website 
as a coach is really important because you can write about informational stuff in your niche. You, you know, if you're coaching anything, you should have a presence either on YouTube or a website, one of the two at least. And we always go with blogging because it's one of the things you can make progress with faster and you can outsource. You don't have to spend all this time on video and podcasting and all of that. So the course is about creating a website and making money through a website. So if that's something you're not interested in, the course is not for you. But I question why, as a coach, you wouldn't want to have one. You know, the way I approach this question as well is thinking, you know, is this something that I have to transfer my whole business identity over to? Uh, mm -hmm. is this something like a whole career shift? And in my opinion, no, I think this is something you can start on the side. Uh, Adam started when he was working at a startup and he did this, uh, as a side hustle. And eventually that, uh, has turned into his full-time thing, but it didn't start that way. And then as a CMO of a brand, I'm very much, uh, building a blog here on the Jasper site, uh, not for myself, but for our company and using a lot of these strategies so uh, to sell our own product and so yeah think about it like that um you know i think that you can build your own domain authority and your authority with readership uh list building and collection there uh and then you might get some uh affiliate revenue through, through partnerships in order to yeah. get partnerships you'll have to trade links like for the jasper blog we'll write for other sites they'll write for us and when I include a backlink, I'm going to use a, an affiliate link. Now today, Jasper makes over $40,000 a month on the side through our blog, just through affiliate connections. Wow. And that's so cool. that's pretty awesome. As a, as a brand, our business is not selling other people's products, but our blog does really well. And by doing this strategy, it helps our domain authority. And uh, so we've seen a, a lot of... Uh, tangible benefits uh, through this, even if we're not selling other people's products that often. Yeah. And really we're building this online business community. Blogging is an aspect of it and blogging is the main focus of this course. But if you're a coach and you're selling, I'm guessing you're selling information, which is also something that I do, we're learning stuff as we go. So, you know, whether it's running ads, whether it's selling information through YouTube videos, all those things, we, we can discuss those things. This main offering is around blogging. But as you know, my business grows and as we teach more, those things become apparent in the future. So we'll have a lot more soon to share on that. Just want to shout out a few other coaches in the crowd here um, that they have a lot of success uh, promoting as a coach. And sometimes it's a side thing. Sometimes it's a big thing. That's awesome. Way to go, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, great. So... All right. I think, uh, I think that's all the main questions. I don't see any more that we haven't answered. Um, oh, here, here's a good one. Actually, I like this. Uh, there's no dumb questions here, okay? Uh, are you supposed to purchase every product? Um, so yeah, this is a good, good question. I get this one a lot. So am I supposed to purchase every product or service? I'd like to create a post about. The good news is with the blog, the answer is no. And let me tell you why. So if you're writing an article about the best uh, hiking poles or the best skiing poles or whatever the article is, the best project management software, if I look at my blog, I probably have uh, a couple hundred articles, maybe 10 products, probably a few thousand companies listed on my blog. If I had to go in and try every single one, it wouldn't scale. So we're talking about scale here. The good news with a blog is that these product uh, list posts that we're creating, best hiking poles, for example, or best golf irons, they're kind of overview posts. They don't go super deep into the details. They cover some features, the pricing, what you think about it, call to action, boom. It's a replicated, replicable, systematized approach to blogging. And those are the posts that make the most money. They're also the easiest to write. Now, if you're writing a super long review post about like monday.com review, and you have to really dive into the details a little bit more, that would require some more. Or think about YouTube. Like if you're a tech YouTuber and you have a camera, you better believe that that camera is going to be in your hand and you're going to be, you know, showing it. But with a blog, it's not quite the case. Like you can provide good information, look at the products, see the features, look at the website, give your own take. You can test it out. You can get a good amount of information just from it. Now, that's not to say, like, for example, 
some of my MVP minimum viable posts, I had just published with five companies in the list. I wrote it pretty well, but I didn't have a ton of experience with them. Luckily, I was a digital marketing director, so I do have a lot of experience with a ton of different software tools. So I know the landscape, which is the importance of you know when we go to niche selection. But yeah, you can write that minimum viable post, and then over time, like. I wrote a, a post on course platforms and I started ranking for it before I created my own course. And then I actually used the courses and then I added a video to the post and now I actually know more about it. So like the posts always adapt and evolve over time. So it wouldn't be like test every product, create the post. It would be create a good post. And then over time, maybe you start ranking for some of these things. Maybe the brands will start sending you the products for free. If you're on page one for something, all of those brands will send you that product for free, guaranteed. So then you can update the article, give your own unique take on it, because we do want uniqueness. We teach about giving your own unique take, which is really important in these articles too. But you don't have to worry about um, testing every single one and buying every single one yourself, because that doesn't really scale. And just from my experience, nobody really does that. Cool. Uh, I'm going to knock out a few technical questions here. So uh, yes, you get the $3,000 course along with all those other perks for a subscription price of either $19.99 a year or $249 per month. You lock in that price uh, when you get started today in cohort one, sorry, cohort two. Um, future cohorts will likely be more expensive. So, um, you know, being in early, we want to reward that. Uh, cohort one got a, uh, a steep discount. So we are still giving discounts, but it will be going up in the future, but not for those that get started now. Yeah, um, just the second group that's going through it. And it's basically, you know, either if you're paying annually or monthly, it will renew, but you can always cancel anytime, basically. Yep. Um, if you're already subscribed to Jasper, this is uh, an additional subscription. It is not included. The software and the mastermind are separate. Um, but if you already have Jasper or you don't have Jasper, when you're in the mastermind, you'll get 50,000 bonus credits. We'll work out a way for, you know, if there are different emails or something like that, uh, we can just chat, hey, at jasper.ai. But we're going to give everybody that is in the mastermind community, whether you're new or uh, have been using Jasper for a long time, 50,000 bonus credits. Bonus credits are different. They roll over every month. So you don't have to use all of them in the first month. You can use them throughout the next year. Um, cool. Uh, coming from a travel blog, um, is this good for like a travel blog that works in, you know, taking it to a broader theme? So yeah, I get this question too. Yeah. Like we talk about living in the middle. We don't want to be a tiny niche site, but we can't write about everything. So if you're a travel blog, you, you wouldn't want to necessarily want to be a travel blog and then an IT blog in one thing. You'd want to stick in one main niche. So for me, I stayed in the like, software make money online niche. Now in that, I write about all kinds of stuff and we're pivoting into finance and crypto as well, which is working already and all these different things. So we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. But the framework that we give is like, we want to start with one broader niche. So something like technology, not just like smart home devices, small niche site, but like technology. And that gives you so much freedom and uh, room to pivot. And even in technology, you could hypothetically go for things like indoor gardening kits, and things that are like our hydroponic indoor gardens, all these different things, because what we're doing is we're building Google Knowledge Graph. So the way that we do link building is getting links from sites in the niche and creating content in the niche, testing these small sub niches over time to eventually build this knowledge graph and then expand out. So you can see a site like CNET or PC Mag or Tom's Guide that writes about everything from technology to software to electric lawnmowers to all kinds of stuff. It's because they have a huge domain authority. We can live in the middle and we can... Um, be in one broad niche and write about a lot of different things and we can start pivoting and adapting, but we don't want to have like two disparate ideas. So like, for example, outdoor and then marketing, that's like two different, but marketing and software are really close and that could be related. So we discussed that in the course and we also discussed how to find your niche based on the unique position in your life. So everyone has a different starting line in their blog. Everyone has different personal and professional experience. Like some people, if you have five to 10 years of experience in your career and a bunch of connections, that might be a leverage point for you. If you don't have that, maybe you have some personal connections, but ultimately it's about finding the unique brand of you 
as the individual. And sometimes it comes down to it. And that's where the coaching helps. It's like, do I go with this project management experience that I have in my career? Or I really like camping? Do I go with that? Where's the opportunity line? We can help you with those with those ideas because sometimes there are two really good niches you could go after and they're a little bit too separate to do it. In this instance, all of these from travel, career, IT, outdoors, tech, family would all work, but you'd want to make sure that you know you can't go super wide where you're talking about everything. You want to stick into one main niche. So like technology, lifestyle, um, outdoor, you know, things like that. Cool. Um, the link link to your training on link building secrets can be found at jasper.ai slash link dash building dash secrets. Um, this is also in the course. So if you're getting a sneak preview. If you really like that training and uh, it's a kind of a litmus test for you to see it, does Adam actually deliver in his content, um, watch that training. And then if you want to get access to the full course, you can hop into the mastermind. Uh, again, there's a five-day money-back guarantee. So uh, we want to make sure that this is right for both of us. Uh, and you can get in there and see if the community is a good fit, if the course content is a good fit. If it's not, just email us at support at adaminfroy.com and we'll get you refunded the full amount. Yeah, and we'll, you'll see in that link building video, uh, my business partner Colin's in there, and he is uh, a business partner and part of adamenfro.com and the business. He's actually the person I hired at year two into my blog. I'm like, I have no idea how to create courses. He's been a course creation expert, and he's you know a part of the business. He's um, a really good expert when it comes to course creation and teaching and how we formatted this this course. And he's in that video specifically. The course itself has videos of both of us, videos of just me videos of just him, but it's all kinds of different content to be as helpful as possible. Sweet. Um, all right. Well, we've gone through a lot of questions here in the Q and a, um, if you go into the Facebook group, we'll also have a thread going where you can ask more questions, uh, tag Adam, tag me, and we'll, uh, personally respond. Um, but with that, thank you all for joining us live and, um, go ahead and get started. Just go to jasper.ai slash mastermind. Choose monthly or yearly, whichever commitment that you want to go with. Uh, and we're excited to see you on the inside. Yeah, excited to see you. Hope to see you there. We're here to help. Your success is our success. And we just want this to be the best, biggest and best, you know, content and blogging community out there. Cool. Thanks so much, y'all.